How do you champs? My name is Mohit and guys um, this is a CSS tutorial and I'll be talking about um, CSS cascade, weightage, specificity. In fact this is the third tutorial when I'm actually talking about the CSS specificity. Uh, we'll come back to that later. Let's uh, talk about something uh, else. Have a look at this picture guys. Okay. Uh, observe it carefully. I'm going to show you the next picture. Have a look at this picture as well. Looks delicious, isn't it? And let me show you the third picture. Okay. Now, all these three pictures that you're seeing right now have something in common. Um, you may be wondering, it's a, it's a CSS tutorial, and uh, why are we uh, getting to see these uh, mouth uh, watering uh, images? There's a reason for that. And what exactly is common? Uh, all these three pictures have something in common and that is saffron, almonds and um, cardamom. Okay. So we have used three uh, flavoring agents, uh, you know, strong aromatic uh, flavoring agents, uh, at least uh, saffron, uh, saffron and um, cardamom surely are uh, very strong uh, flavoring agents uh, and almonds give you that nutty taste okay it has its own uh, flavor guys we need uh, a few nuts a few almonds out here in all these three dishes even lesser amount of cardamom it could be a you know a pinch of uh, the cardamom powder and um, just a few strands of uh, the saffron and sometimes you see we don't even use these strands we just uh, you know dip it in water and uh, then allow you know it to stand in the water for some time and use that water right so you see uh, here what would happen if I you know instead of using a, a few strands let's say instead of using 10 15 strands of saffron I, I increase that to up to 50 or I use a lot of uh, you know, instead of using a pinch of uh, cardamom powder actually drop in uh, two or three uh, teaspoons of that what would happen it will actually spoil the dish you see one flavor might kill the other one it may dominate the other one so much that it may suppress the other flavor we all know that we all know that cooking is an art and uh, the artist uh, is an artist because he knows exactly how much to you know put in a certain dish uh, CSS is no different. You see, um, it may happen many a times that you try and apply a style or a rule onto an element and you fail to do so. Okay, and you're actually left uh, in confusion thinking what exactly uh, went wrong. Why is the rule that I'm trying to apply to a certain element is not working? I'm sure uh, some of you, uh, most of you in fact, may have encountered such a situation. Uh, let me give you another simile. I have a glass of water, some water, which is cold. I have yet another glass of water, some water, which is hot. Okay, And I mix the two up. Now, I cannot be absolutely sure that the, uh, you know, after mixing the two, is, is that uh, you know glass of water hot or is it uh, still cold and even if I add a few let's say ice cubes to the water if the water was uh, boiling hot you would you, you know the ice cubes might melt in the resulting water may still be uh, pretty hot you just can't be sure so I'm getting to the point where I'm trying to say that these styles of the rules that we create in CSS uh, have a weightage have a specificity uh, you see you could encounter a situation wherein uh, four to five or even six to seven rules may get applied on the same element and in which case uh, obviously only one can dominate only one can win only one can take deep precedence only one can uh, come out trumps so my ho the whole purpose uh, of you know showing these pictures the exercise of showing these pictures and talking about that other simile or mixing the you know the hot the uh, cold water again uh, how much is the cold water how much is the hot water you see and how cold and how hot it is you see and how many cubes were actually added it's all a very complex uh, equation css works just the same way 
every style that we create you know you all know that we have compound rules we have classes we have IDs uh, we have uh, uh, pseudo uh, classes and uh, we have very long rules uh, when it actually comes to uh, descendant selectors adjacent selectors so when five to six rules actually get applied onto the same element what happens in we'll have a look at that we'll have a look at that through an example let me say create new HTML okay uh, guys first things first let me create one rule and then I will override it with the other one and then override the second one with the third one the third one with the fourth one and then I I, I, I hope you'll actually understand the concept clearly so let me click on the plus button let me drop down the contextual selector to a tag and let me target the div element okay clearly says uh, this selector name will apply your rule to all the elements on your web page cool and I'm creating an internal or an embedded rule let me say okay and let me go to the background uh, category let me give it a background color let's let's go with any color actually and uh, let me go to the um, box category and uh, let me say I would want the all the devs to be 400 in width and 400 in height let me say okay all right and then guys I need to drop in a div CSS specificity is the title that I've chosen let me save it up as well let's just say CSS to save time okay now let me drop in a div so insert layer objects div tag okay Mm. and this time let me start away say okay all right let me remove the uh, text inside guys as you can actually see in the code area we have the opening and the closing body tags inside we have the opening and the closing div tags and just because I had defined that I would want all my divs to be 400 by 400 a perfect square and the background color to be uh, this color a pound sign 09c um, automatically it actually gets that color cool uh, now let me create a stronger rule one that will override this rule as far as this div is concerned so let me create a class this time okay it's already uh, the contextual selector is already set to class and uh, <coughs> let me give it a name of let's say class one I can't think of any other name right now uh, let me say okay and um, let me go to the background color and choose a different color let's say this one let me say okay uh, which also means I would need to apply this class to the div so uh, let me select the div okay uh, by clicking on the edge and uh, then what I can do is I can go down here in the properties and then uh, select the class one and guys you can see that uh, this actually changes color and if we have a look in the uh, code area the div has been uh, applied a class attribute of class one and hence uh, changing the background color of the div okay out here you can notice we have the opening style tag the type attribute and these are the declarations for the div and uh, this is the declaration for the class one um, guys uh, you can be 100 percent sure that not always the rule coming in the end overrides the rule uh, you know the latter rule will uh, override the formal rule that does not always it doesn't always work that way see I can swap the rules uh, let me show it to you I can actually in fact let me take this rule let me cut it from here and uh, let me drop it above this rule out here okay it's still uh, let me refresh it still uh, doesn't actually matter so you see there are times when the rule that actually uh, occurs in the end uh, overrides the one that uh, comes uh, earlier but that's not always the case guys so it's it's a it's a lot complex than that it's, it's all about specificity as well cool uh, now let me create yet another style or a rule that will override the second rule that I just created okay so let me click on this uh, new CSS rule plus button 
Okay, this time let me create an ID rule. So instead of saying class one, let me say ID one and uh, prefix a pound sign. You see, uh, IDs should have a pound sign just before them. So go with the ID. Okay, so out here in the description, you can uh, read uh, it says uh, this selector name will apply your rule to any HTML elements with ID ID one. Again, I'm creating an internal rule let me say okay and let me change the background color to a different color this time let's say this one let me say okay and after which guys let me select line number 26 which is the div and uh, let me give it an id of id one and you can actually see that an id rule or an id selector is more powerful than a class selector okay and a class selector is more powerful than a tag selector or an element selector okay uh, they have a weightage in terms of numbers a tag selector has a specificity of one uh, a class of 10 and an id of 100 okay you can have multiple classes applied to an element but even though uh, you know you may have 20 different classes applied to one single element if there's one single id will override all the classes no matter even if the the number you know see 20 classes apply to an element uh, 20 into 10 is 200 and one single you know id applied to the same element will give you a specificity of 100 but since it's an id an id will override uh, a class no matter how many classes are used on the same element <laughs> very very complex okay but uh, uh, you, you see as you st uh, uh, work with this uh, concept uh, it actually becomes pretty easy okay so now I would want to create another rule which is even more powerful let's see how uh, I'll manage that let me click on the uh, new CSS uh, rule uh, button uh, this time I'm gonna set the contextual selector to a compound and then let me say div and then pound sign id1 so basically this uh, new compound uh, rule or uh, selector will target all divs with uh, an id id1 okay let me say okay and give a different background color let's say this one let me say okay uh, and it got applied i'll tell you why it got applied um, it got applied because this selector has a has an ID as well as a element for every element you give one point uh, you get one point and for every ID you get 100 points so this selector has a total of 101 points so basically overriding this one which has just 100 uh, points cool now let me create another rule which is even more stronger so let me click on the plus button let me drop down the contextual selector to a compound this time i'm gonna say body one point div one more point two points now and pound sign div one so two elements and one id a total of 102 this rule should be the strongest of them all so a background color let's say this one let me say okay and uh, body div pound sign div one let me go to the live view it didn't actually take an effect i'm just wondering why okay uh that's because uh, i have a typo out here it's not div one it's id one and i'm sorry it's id with a capital i i have to be careful all right now the rule has actually uh take an effect and uh, you can see that this is the most uh, strongest of all the rules it has a specificity of 102 okay um, and uh, obviously if I were to create yet another compound rule which is something like HTML body 1 plus 1 2 then say um, div pound sign ID 1 okay so a total uh, specificity of 103 let me say okay and let me go to the background color and 
let me give it a give it a color or pound sign uh, 900 let me say okay and guys since it has a specificity of 103 three elements and one id one plus one plus one plus um, 100 okay it actually overrode everything took precedence uh, guys out here in the css tiles panel you have another tab which is the current tab okay um, let me select line number 35 okay out here guys uh, you get an idea of the cascade uh, in which the rules have been applied okay so let me explain this to you you see if I click on this uh, icon it clearly says that the background color is defined in rule HTML body div pound sign ID one so basically this is the rule the winning rule okay and if I go back to this tab it shows the cascade of rules uh, for the selected tag that's what the uh, tooltip says so if I click on uh, div you can actually see that the property called background color has uh, been uh, struck through that's because this uh, rule is not responsible for the background color although this rule is responsible for the height and the width this is the cascade guys this is the order in which the rules have been applied so this is the strongest of them all and let me click on this rule you can see that the background color is struck out here it clearly says that even the, the back you know the background color does not apply to your selection because uh, it has been overridden by the rule uh, HTML body dev ID one right so it's been struck through here as well you can see struck through here as well struck through here as well but a thumbs up out here so the background color got applied through the rule HTML body uh, div pound sign div one okay and guys let me tell you if I use the style attribute out here now that has an um, you know a specificity of 1000 and let's say a background color of let's say black right let's see what would happen you see uh, the style attribute since it has a specificity of 1000 will override everything you can see the cascade out here so the inline style uh, has a specificity of 1000 obviously this had a specificity of 103 so you see if I take the mouse pointer over out here it, in the tooltip it will give you the specificity 0103 so basically a total of 103 and it clearly says out here that's 1000 cool and guys no I'm gonna do something out here I'm gonna go to the weakest of all the rules which is this rule pound sign 09 C is the color I'm gonna make it important like this okay I can apply the important declaration like this and um, guys you see that then this rule actually wins um, you can see uh, that if I click on div out here the background color now is getting applied through this uh, rule although it has a specificity of uh, 0001 basically just one since I have applied the important declaration it will override everything even the inline style you can see that the background color has been struck through clearly says that um, background color does not apply your uh, selection because uh, it has been overridden by the rule div where it is marked important <laughs> very very cool so guys uh, um, clashes are bound to happen and uh, you see there is an order there's a cascade in which they get applied so you have to be careful guys and uh, now that you've understood the concept I'm sure that uh, you'll never allow yourself to get cornered so I hope you'll keep coming back for my tutorials. You have a good day, guys. Bye-bye. Peace.